Come on. Give me a win. Yes. Oh, we did it, guys. We did it. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code it resolves 10 YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to our final Innistrad Crimson Val standard gameplay video. This is going to be a fun one. This is going to be a very silly one, kind of janky one, but we're going to have a good time with it. Before we do jump into this, I just want to remind you, subscribe to the channel, not only to help support the channel, which of course is greatly appreciated, but on top of that, we actually also have a giveaway going on right now for a draft booster box of Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. We're going to be giving that away on February 23rd. Uh, so you still have a few weeks to enter, but there are multiple ways to enter. Subscribing is only one. So I do want to encourage you to check out the article over on our website at resolvesmtg.com as well as the video on our homepage uh, here on YouTube that you can uh, view for all the details, where to subscribe, where to follow, that kind of stuff. Um, but all that to say, let's talk about today's deck because it's kind of a silly one. It's not really a very good deck. It's a deck I threw together, uh, but one that I've really enjoyed playing and it's Mono Black Discard. Uh, you'll notice we've got a lot of the normal culprits that you would expect in discard. So we've actually got, we're kind of going creature and sorcery instant speed. So we've got Acquisitions Expert as well as Elder Fang Disciple as a couple of two ofs. And the big reason for doing this is so we can bring them back with either Inscription of Ruin or the Awakening uh, and still get extra discards off. Uh, and so they actually work pretty well together because of the, uh, the, um, party mechanic I can never remember that mechanic because it's not very good but um <laughs> all that to say they actually work pretty well together but I'm actually curious to see how that works out because I haven't really uh, as two ofs you know they're really just there as blockers and an extra discard it's not meant to be anything like the main focus of the deck uh and so we'll see how those actually play out we do have dread fuge uh fuge I don't know. Uh, but basically, uh, you can play this for one. So target re target player reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card with mana value two or less. That player discards the card. However, you can cleave this late in the game for three, and you actually just get to choose whatever card you want. Um, and that's actually quite nice. Now, normally, we're just probably going to play this for one because we really don't care what we're discarding. Uh, however, it certainly is nice to have that availability. I chose this over Duress, uh, truthfully, because of that cleave mechanic. We do have Infertile Grass for a little bit of just kind of one for one removal. Now again, Inscription of Ruin here does a lot of different things. We can use it to discard some cards, bring something back, or destroy a creature, uh, or all of them. If we get this late game, we can actually do all three. So very, very powerful card here for sure. We do have Go Blank discarding two cards from the opponent, and then of course exiling their graveyard. This is a key card. Exiling Graveyards is very, very good right now uh, and something that we're definitely going to want to try and do. We've got a lot of that kind of sub theme in here. We'll talk about that as we go. Uh, speaking of, we do have Graveyard Trespasser. This is a great ability. Uh, able to exile cards from the graveyard, but that ward cost of discarding a card makes it a little bit tricky for the opponents to really deal with. If we can get this down to, you know, our opponent not having any cards in hand or only having one card in hand, if it is a removal spell, they can't target this because they can't discard a card to do so. Uh, and we'll see that here again with Westgate Regent as well. Uh, in the four drop slot, we've got a couple nice little pieces here. Hagger Mauling really just here smooths out the mana, but it is also a removal spell. Very key card here and just kind of a nice one. It's not really a huge input, but it definitely helps us out. Uh, Agadim's Awakening plays a similar role here uh, just to be able to bring stuff back or play the land, obviously, I mean. Uh, Skull Raid, a very good card in this list. So target opponent discards two cards. If fewer than two cards were discarded this way, you draw cards equal to the difference. What that means is if we play this and the opponent has no cards in hand, instead of discarding two cards from the opponent, we actually draw two cards. If they discard one card because they only have one card, we actually draw a card as well and they still discard that card. So there's some long-term value to the Skull Raid here. We can also foretell it to get it out very quickly. Uh, so I'm actually pretty excited for that. Now the five drop slot is where things get really spicy. Uh, we do have Turgrid here. The lantern side of Turgrid is really, really good in this list because we do get to a point where we kind of just wanted them to blow some of their stuff up. 
Uh, and so this allows us to kind of whittle them down over time and we can obviously untap it and use it multiple times. If we play on the Turgrid side, obviously that's quite good as well. So we'll see if that works. Uh, Westgate Regent is really the big finisher of the deck. It's a 4-4 with flying for five. That ward cost, again, same as the Trespasser, really important because it's just very difficult to deal with. Uh, and then on top of that, it, uh, it gains quite a few counters if you can get in for some attacks. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, and then finally, we actually do have full four blood on the snows here. You'll notice we do have the snow land package. <clears throat> uh, this allows us to bring back the Turgrids, the Westgate Regents, the, the Graveyard Trespassers, whatever we need to bring back, even an Elder Fang Disciple, just to get something out of the hand here, uh, as well as deal with a lot of the aggressive decks that we expect to see. So while we can't ramp into this, we do have a number of things that can help block in the early game, uh, and then hopefully bring this back late game. Uh, now, in the land drop slot, we just have 20 snow-covered lands and two Hive of the Eye Tyrant. We do have 24 lands available, though, thanks to these two here, so I feel okay about that. And again, Hive of the Eye Tyrant allows us to exile cards from the opponent's graveyard, so still very, very important. But all that to say, this is going to be kind of a janky deck. Again, I threw this one together this morning just for, for a little bit of fun. This is our last Innistrad Crimson Val standard gameplay video. From here on out, we're going to be looking at Neon Dynasty starting tomorrow. Uh, and so I thought I'd just jump in on this while I can and just see how it goes. So let's jump in the games. Let's see if we can get some wins. Let's have some fun along the way. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. And yeah, I mean, this is a pretty easy keep. We've got that Fuge right there. We've got the Go Blank as well. And then turn four and five, we've actually got some very powerful things. So really, it's just a matter of getting some security blankets in place. If we can get like an Infernal Grasp, I'd feel quite good. If we could get a Blood on the Snow, I'd feel even better. Uh, but I am going to go ahead and jump on this now. We get to reveal their hand, and then crucially, we just get to get something out of it. That's actually quite helpful because this hand is going to do very little against us for quite some time. Uh, so I'm actually pretty happy with that. We actually get to then go blank this upcoming turn and then exile the graveyard as well, which is quite nice. Or we can Elder Fang Disciple. Um, yeah, I'm actually going to Elder Fang Disciple. Interesting, they see that, or we see they have green in their hand. Uh, I would think they'd have white. So maybe this is Abzan. Maybe that's what we're looking at. Uh, kind of nice they got a Tox roll out because we can uh, exile their graveyard at some point. They are going to ramp here and then get that learn off, uh, which is a little scary for sure, but uh, we should be able to get around that. Okay. Uh, interesting. So let's drop this. We are just going to enter it tapped. We're not going to worry about that. And then let's go ahead and go blank. It's going to get a couple of cards out of hand and exile the graveyard. Both very important things, obviously. Uh, and we'll see what they decide to get rid of here. It might be Path of Peril. Um, it might be environmental sciences. It could be quite a number of things. Yep. And a field of ruin. Okay. Uh, I think they're probably correct in getting rid of the field of ruin. It really isn't going to do that much against us. Uh, we do have the hive of the eye tyrant, but other than that, we're really not under, or we're not going to be pushing them a lot on the, the land side. So I think that that makes sense. We have a red source. What in the world? I'm confused by this list. Um, very cool, but just didn't expect it. Uh, do we want to get Turgrid going, or do we want to Skull Raid them? Um, I'm gonna go Lantern. This may be incorrect, but I don't think we're under pressure of the Toxroll coming down quite yet, and I'd like to get them down to just Toxroll and maybe one other card in hand, and then we can Skull Raid them. Uh, they're just gonna take the three. Makes perfect sense. Ooh, Burning Rune Demon. Okay. Uh, that's a scary card, no doubt about it. Uh, let's hope that we can get something back here. Um, a Blood on the Snow would not, not go amiss. Just a land, truthfully, would be quite helpful. <laughs> uh, that would be really, really nice. Um, but we will see. We will see. Uh, most likely, they're going to continuously take life damage from this one. Uh, let's see. Put one card in the opponent's hand. Okay. Um, either way is not great for us. They get flashback on both of these, uh, but they don't actually have anything in the graveyard, so that's kind of important to note. Uh, let's do this first. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Hmm. 
let's see. What's the clever way to do this, I suppose? So, they don't currently have anything in the graveyard. It's important to note. So, I'm actually going to go this route. We're going to pass. I'm not going to quite use the lantern yet. So, what they can do is just discard the Toxtral, uh, which immediately allows them to kind of do whatever they need to do here. Um, all right, now I will use the lantern because they don't have the mana to do anything. And they're just gonna take the three. Okay, I'm very surprised they don't just discard. I mean, that'd be a very easy play I would think to make, but that's fine. We do take six, which is not fine. Uh, there's a land, which is helpful. Hmm. I think we kind of have to attack this. Um, the question becomes, how do we want to do this? Again, I think we go Westgate Regent. That may be incorrect. I really don't know. Uh, it's kind of a tricky one here. Um, hmm. All right, they're going to take that life and get a card from the top of their deck. Uh, makes a lot of sense. They're just trying to refill for sure. Both of these have flashback. Wow. This is a cool deck. Uh, Jund flashback. Interesting one. Uh, yeah. We're going to be able to gain life back here with the professor. That's, that's pretty dangerous. I don't think we're going to be able to outpace this, actually, uh, which is kind of unfortunate. So I assume they're going to do this. They're going to have to discard a card to do it, uh, which is important. Let's go ahead and... Probably just Lightning Bolt them. Uh, that's about all we can do. And then they'll discard, I assume, Tox Roll because they can get it back. Oh, no. They're going to... Tapping at the window. Okay. And we draw an Acquisitions Expert. Not exactly ideal, but that's fine. And land. Ugh. All right, so we can do this. Uh, wait a second. Let's do this. Um, I mean, we're, we're pretty dead here, right? They just attack and we're, we're gone. There's really nothing we can do about that. Um, so unfortunate. It is what it is. I think we're just going to die here. So that's fine. Uh, let's do this. Might as well. We do draw a card and it's just a land. All right. I'm going to go ahead and concede here, guys. We really don't even stand a chance. That is okay, though. We weren't too far off, I think. we. Uh, that was a, a rough matchup. The fact that it was a reanimator flashback deck made that very difficult. But let's jump into a game two right now. All right, guys. Here we are for game number two. And this is actually kind of a rough hand. However, we do have a couple of two drops and some good threes. I'm going to try and keep it. We do have the Hagra Mauling that we can play out here as the uh, the land for turn one. And then turn two, we do have a guaranteed acquisitions expert. So really, it's just a matter of can we draw more lands, uh, which would be great. We didn't this time. We've got two Westgate Regents, which is not ideal at the moment, but that's OK. Uh, a land would be great. We can start the inscription discard um, and then have the Graveyard Trespasser available uh, as well. We kind of make that decision as we get to it. Let's see what they actually reveal to us here. Probably just a land, I would assume. Uh, or something along those lines. We'll, we'll see. Oh, okay. Let their sea adversary, sure. So maybe it is a con uh, situation where we want to keep the Inscription of Ruin just to be able to deal with a creature. Uh, it does allow us to make that happen, which is kind of nice. We'll see what they play here. Um, interesting. Okay, so we are stuck on lands here not ideal last time we drew just a couple too many this time we just don't have any so uh we do have infernal grasp up though so if they do play a creature we actually have an answer um and hopefully that works out we'll see i would love a land off the top ah we are against mill okay that is less exciting uh and still no land <laughs> Oh, guys, this is a bad subset of games. That's just the reality of it. Uh, we definitely get rid of the Maddening Cacophony just so we can't get milled even further here. They do have Tasha's Hideous Laughter again. Uh, so chances are we're going to be in some trouble there. But, I mean, we can only do so much, right? So we'll do the best we can. 
Uh, would love to get the Inscription of Ruin down just to get them out of cards in hand. The one good thing about this is um, once they've played their spells, they really don't have very much anymore. And we cannot draw a land. Guys, this is sad. <laughs> If we had a land right now, we would be in such a better position. Oh, that feels so terrible. Um, also, the Graveyard Trespasser, the sooner we can get that down, the sooner we can start getting these cards out of their graveyard, which is very important for us. Oh, wow. They're just going to go off here. So they're going to get the Tasha's Hideous Laughter off twice. Ugh, man. Lands, people. Lands. Why is that so difficult to draw? <laughs> yes. All right, so they milled half our deck just now. Well, there's a land. Um, Go Blank is quite good for us though. It exiles their graveyard, so that gets rid of everything, uh, which is just helpful in case they get a Bloodthirsty Adversary. They don't have a play anymore. Um, so we'll see. I, I'm, not, I'm not super optimistic, but we will see. Um, do we discard cards or do we trespasser? I think we trespasser. We have to get, uh, yeah, we'll exile that. We really have to get as much damage in as possible now because the reality is, uh, if we don't, we will just die. We deck ourselves eventually. Um, so they can double up on the trespasser, but they do have to get rid of both cards in hand if they get a removal spell. If they don't, we're just going to discard two cards with the inscription and, uh, Hopefully be in an okay spot to wreck them. Uh, but we'll see. Whew. What a rough start. What very rough start. Game one was pretty rough. That was a bad matchup for us. And then here we're kind of in a similar position where they've already milled, you know, two thirds of our deck. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we can get past it. I'm, I'm not optimistic, but we have actually done a good bit of work just with that go blank so that's helpful okay so they are willing to double up here that's a pretty bold move um yeah that's fine by me all the while we're continuously getting a little bit more going here and we do have the westgate regent which we are 100 percent throwing down here the reason we want to get this down obviously is multiple one it's just the game finishing spell obviously this is how we win the game in my opinion second though they can't actually deal with it yet um which is really important so <laughs> uh let's go ahead and attack in first all right uh we're gonna get a bunch of counters on this i think what we end up doing is graveyard trespasser here to get rid of the cathartic fire and then that allows us to leave up the Infernal Grass. Not that we probably need it. However, this again just hastens up the clock. If they deal with the Westgate Regent or the Graveyard Glutton, we still have the other as a major, major threat here. Okay, they're going to discard two cards, then draw that many. That's, that's good for one. Come on. Give me a win. Yeah. Oh, we did it, guys. We did it. That makes me feel really good. We beat Is It Mill. That was awesome. Let's jump into a game three. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. And this is a bit of an interesting hand, but I do think we can definitely try it. Uh, we'll see if it actually works out. We've got the acquisitions expert, so we've got kind of an early block as well as the early discard. Uh, and then, of course, we do have the Skull Raids as well. Uh, so we'll see. I mean, it may not be perfect, but we are drawing lands, which helps us get to that Westgate Regent pretty quickly. Um, and we just get a land out of hand here. Nothing crazy, but that's fine. Looks like Abzan might be the play. Abzan life game, perhaps. We'll see. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and do this. And I will attack in. Uh, obviously, they're not going to block, but this is definitely a free point of damage, so why not take it? Um, all right, wedding announcement. Looks like a token check, potentially. Um, this is going to be an interesting one. All right, let's do this. Let's go ahead and full-fledged Skull Raid here. Uh, we've got the Foretold one, but we can drop that plus the Trespasser next turn if we'd like. Wow, okay. Some interesting stuff there. And we'll just pass here. That way we can trade off. So this is going to hopefully keep them off of drawing a card for the wedding announcement because they probably don't want to lose that innkeeper and attack in. 
Um, there's the hollowed haunting. Fully expected that to come down at some point. Wow, and they are willing to. That's a, that's a bold move. They get to draw a card here. That's fine. Uh, that will be, unfortunately for them, basically a wasted play because we do just get to discard their, their hand here. <laughs> Uh, and then we'll go ahead and play the Graveyard Trespasser and exile the Prosperous Innkeeper. Uh, so now, this Hollowed Haunting is a scary card. I want to very clearly point that out. That is a terrifying, terrifying card. But the reality is, if they were only drawing one card per turn, we're not at the end of the rope yet. So we're actually doing okay. They are really going crazy here, though, with these. Let's play that Westgate Regent. Um... And they've already flipped this, so I think we just wait. Uh, again, crucially, the Skull Raid works really interestingly, whereas we can just draw cards off of it now, um, which is kind of cool. Let's do this first. We're going to attack in. This does have, you know, or they do have a blocker here, which is relevant. Uh, let's go ahead and do this to draw some cards. Um, and Agadim's Awakening, huh? interesting um okay well now we've got another westgate regent <laughs> uh which is very good they can't target these with the ward uh that's something very crucial that they have to consider so the only thing they can hit here is the acquisitions expert which is like fine <laughs> it's really not the end of the world for us all right uh let's attack in I'm gonna, I'm gonna attack him with both here. This may not be the best bet, but it's definitely what we're gonna do. Get both of those out of there. It's a pretty big swing in our favor, and uh, crucially, that means that Westgate Regent, basically on its own, is a major threat, so feeling okay. Um, and they're just bricking. They're really just drawing land. All right, we got the win, guys. I think we have time for a fourth game. Let's jump into it. Let's see if we can get another win with this list. That was awesome. All right, guys, here we are. This is going to be our last game, no doubt about it. And this is a bit of an interesting hand, but definitely one we can keep. If we get a third land, we are pretty much golden. Uh, we do have the Skull Raid as well to help us kind of get rid of some stuff. And there we go. We definitely did what we needed to do. I am going to go ahead and uh, foretell this uh, versus leaving up the Infernal Grass. It looks like blue and red is the color combo we're up against here. I'm kind of expecting another mill deck, to be honest, uh, which is... Annoying, but not the end of the world. Let's go ahead and inscription. We'll just discard two cards from their hand here. Keep it nice and simple. We might get a little peek as to what they might be doing as well. Uh, if this is the mill deck, they may have that flashback. Uh, oh, interesting. Okay, so this is a mill land destruction deck, potentially. Uh, that's interesting. All right. So they're gonna have one blue remaining uh, unless they decide to play something else here. It's interesting. Okay. They're actually giving us food for the trespasser here though, which isn't really a bad thing. Um, do we need to kill this is the question. I'm gonna do this in case they have a Jawari disruption. I'm not sure that they will, but I think it's definitely worth it to, to try. Uh, and and play safe here. We don't really need to risk it. We've got options, so I'd rather get some cards out of hand here, I think, more than anything else. Frostbite and a Fading Hope. Okay, so they were leaving up a Fading Hope potentially to save the crab. So I'm glad we did an Infernal Grasp, actually. There's that red source. We do get milled a few cards here, but the Ruin Crab is not quite as good as the Tasha's Hideous Laughter that we faced earlier. Uh, and there... <laughs> I was going to say, if you want to attack, go for it. That's fine. Uh, we really need a land. That is a huge, huge thing for us. I'm going to actually just go this route. This is pretty simple. If they have a counter, they're going to counter it. Looks like they don't. Which just means that we're now not under the threat of mill pressure just from lands. Uh, now, they still, I'm sure, have some other things they can do. But they have to dig for it, it looks like here. So that's helpful. We really need to dig for a land. Um, if we do get a land, we've got the Lantern going. I think we probably want to start getting this Trespasser down or just go blank, discard their hand, and yeah, it looks like they're going to 
mill a good bit here. I think we end up using the go blank here. It's like just a land. Okay. Let's go ahead and do this. We're just going to exile. Get this out of hands. They're down to nothing now. Um, oh, excuse me. This isn't in their hand. This is the foretold card, of course. Um, but we do exile their graveyard, which I think is relevant. Okay. Maybe we should have then just played the... Wow, the hideous laughter. All right, fair enough. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, I think last turn the go blank was a mistake. Uh, I think that was definitely my fault. We still cannot draw lands to save our life, though. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and take that hideous laughter out just in case they've got a replay spell. We don't really want them to have that ability. There's expressive iteration. That's a good card. Uh, and we have 11 cards left in, in our deck here. So we really have to get a move on. We definitely should have played this last turn. Um, just so we could have attacked with it a turn earlier. Hopefully saved ourselves a little bit here. But it is what it is. Oh, man. Well, now there's very little hope of us actually winning this game. Um, all right. We are going to play the Lantern. Uh, we are going to attack in. We'll exile this. We have two cards left in our deck. Uh, yeah, I think we made a mistake. I don't think it would have mattered as much. I think they definitely just win regardless here. Um, but that is pretty unfortunate. Uh, I mean... Okay. Uh, let's do this, because we kind of have to get this going here. If this is the land, this is unfortunate. Uh, but we actually still have the Trespasser. They're just going to disrupt that. We'll resolve that. That's fine. We'll decline. That's totally fine. Let's go ahead and do this. Um, exile those two. Let's do this. And we'll attack. Uh, let's look at our own graveyard just for the sake of why not. We'll get the Acquisitions Expert just to gain a life. All right. Theoretically, if they brick, we can do it. Uh, we can just deal six damage. Theoretically. <laughs> this is a close, close game. I mean, this is down to it. Okay. Uh, yeah. But I think we do it. Right? We do it. Yeah. Guys, we did it. Oh my gosh. Yes, we did it. Wow. Oh my gosh, what a game. And we ranked up. Look at that, guys. That was amazing. All right, let's talk about this. All right, first and foremost, I just want to say this deck was meant to be kind of janky, kind of silly, not really all that competitive. Uh, however, it worked okay. We did get a few wins with this, and <clears throat> excuse me, that last game, wow, that was down to it. We had no cards left in the deck. It was all down to their top deck. If they had any kind of, uh, well, you know, I say that. Truthfully, if they had discarded or milled any more cards, there was nothing to mill. So we were pretty well squared away. I think almost no matter what. Oh, that's amazing. Guys, that was fun. Uh, I really like this card. It was, I think it's a very annoying deck to play against, uh, similar to Mill, and we saw how frustrating Mill can be. Um, but we were able to set ourselves up, and I think the Lantern, along with the Trespassers, such a nice little combo because, again, they were already at no cards in hand, so they were top decking. If they didn't draw anything useful, they had no cards to discard. It's just a guaranteed either three damage or they sacrificed the permanent and we had plenty of damage to get in and uh, kill. I say plenty. We had exactly enough damage to get in there and kill them and it worked out great. But man, what a deck. This was a really fun one. I do recommend just trying discard if you get the opportunity. All that to say though, obviously the meta is changing tomorrow. Uh, and so with that in mind, we are going to be jumping into some Neon Dynasty deck lists. Uh, hopefully having some fun with that. We'll see how quickly we can get some gameplay up. I am going to do the best I can to make that happen. I may even take the day off just so we can kind of, you know, push it a little bit. But regardless, guys, just want to say a huge thank you. I hope you guys are excited for the new set. I hope you guys are excited for the giveaway. Please make sure you subscribe if you're not already, just so you can enter for that. And great way to support the channel. But guys, thank you so much. I'll see you later.